March of Swelling Mists. Let's pact it. I don't want to phase it. I don't want them to phase things. If they counter the pact, then we'd have to pay five. Wowzers. Wowzers! <laughs> we get an XP. They quit because of this card. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to a new video. Today is a spicy blend of blue and aggro, essentially. This is the closest card that really exists next to Ojutai, which is one of my favorite commanders in Paper Commander. Sadly, Ojutai isn't available in the format, so we have to deal with just having him with. But to be honest, he can be quite a bit better or worse, depending on the stance you have. He has Ward 4 as long as it's untapped. So it's similar to Ojutai, although Ojutai gets strip hexproof, so that's better. However, Imrith has the ability to draw one to three cards, depending on how many cards are in your hand. So you've got no cards in hand, and he hits, you'll draw three. And, um, yeah, it's a really powerful card, so you can drop three cards. Ojutai only gets you one from three, so, yeah. You could, um, you could say one is better than the other, but I think they're pretty even in that regard. Both same stats, five, five, slot flies for five. The deck is kind of as controlly as you could expect. I've gone full control here, just because it's the only way to really deal with a lot of the meta right now. So we've got straight up counter spell, um, memory lapse, uh, pact of negations. So you've got the like the really classic powerful counter spells that I don't normally use, but in this case, I thought why not go full power for once? It's quite rare that I do. Um, but it's just because we want to be able to defend Imrith. Um, because as soon as he dies, it gets a lot harder to finish the battle out. But he's essentially going to be a win con and your draw engine. So yeah, it's a pretty powerful deck. You've got a lot of ways to draw cards. Aggressive at two mana. Um, it's also got a few beatdown cards like Terramander, which can get bigger. Spectral Sailor, which comes in and just draw, helps you draw cards later on as well. There's a few ways like that to beat down. Um, not a single 5 drop in the deck, and only six, uh, 3 6 drops, so yeah, very aggressive curve. The deck list will be in the description below, so check it out if you want to see how I built the deck. This is probably one of my favourite decks I think I've ever built, it's just so resilient, it's got a pretty good win rate. Um, you will be facing some powerful decks because of stuff like Memory Lapse, Counter Spell, there's a clue in the frame. If the frame is like this, then it's probably a strong card. And yeah, don't forget to leave me a like and a sub if you enjoy what you see. And check out my donations page if you uh, would like to help the channel out. It really means a lot to people who already have. Let's get into the games. We go first against Davril, and we've got a pretty decent starting hand. We've got Irenicus's Vile Duplication, which is just an incredible sorcery. Basically copies a legend you control, except it's not a legend and it has flying. So good for uncommon. So so good. So Davriel is super powerful. The only issue we'll have against Davriel really is discard effects, which could ruin our day. We've got to wash away, so we do have a way to stop Davriel resolving. Or any any spell that is. The Bankbuster. Ooh, Treacherous Blessing. I think we stop that. Because that just draws them three, and we really don't want them to just have those extra three, despite the fact that every time they cast a spell, it would hurt them. But then again, when they have the Davriel out, probably not going to matter, because a lot of Davriel players seem to get... Oh my goodness, Arena. Yeah, let's just get rid of that. Too strong. And this is a good time for the key, I think. And let's get the counter spell in case they manage to. But we can't use it. So I tell you what, we'll get rid of it here. But then when we cast Gale, we can then just get the counter spell back. The reason I didn't want to get a non blue card is in case they had a way to deal with the key, but I don't think they do in black. So they missed the land drop, but then they found one there. So they're going to make us discard a card. I guess we'll get rid of this. And then we'll decline so they don't just got a second, which is pretty bonkers. So we could so we've got three, four, five, six, seven. Go for Gale, and I think we'll get the counter spell back. Which is pretty good. 
and then at any point we can specialize i think unless it's a sorcery speed specialize yeah it's sorcery that's fine we want the two mana up anyway for the counter spell so it looks like they're just trying to dig deeper one two three four five six seven so next turn we go imrith and counter spell so depending on what they do here we might not want to use this we might want to use it just to defend imrith Oh, Thrill Grasp. Yeah, this seems like the move to me. <laughs> so if they can't get rid of Imrith, they might be in a bit of trouble. Yeah, that's fine. Kill the Gale. I don't know why they did that. There, it's almost like they wanted me to use the counter spell, but I'm honestly not bothered about losing Gale. He's already done his job. He ate up a spell, and now I have this counter spell to protect my most valuable asset in the whole deck. All of their spells are going to cost a lot more as well, unless we obviously tap them out. Brineborn. Let's give him the lifelink as well. So we gain six if we attack, which could prove to be useful. So they could very well have a removal spell here. But it would not work because the ward is four and they only have four mana. Let's see if they know how this works. So, are they going to... Oh, we only have Ward if it's untapped, isn't it? Yeah, okay, cool. So, yeah, we'll just count this straight up. We get to replace the card anyway. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, keep forgetting it has Ward 4 only when it's untapped. And, yeah, pass the turn. So, they could yet again have another kill spell, which is very likely. They are already on 13. Brineborn Cutthroat could be potentially another threat. Especially if they deal with Imrith. And then we get to play this guy. Shame this doesn't untap something. Okay, so Imrith will die here. Wow, they got a copy of the Snowborn Simulacra. I'm so glad they didn't uh, get to uh, resolve that spell. Sorin the Mirthless. Okay, are they going to go for a... Out of my way. Sure, so they go for an attacker. And then we'll flash in the Brineborn here. So, what can we do? Well, we'll tap down this blocker because we want to be able to kill the Sorin, don't we? Two damage is enough, so we can go for the Elixir. So it's going to cost eight mana to untap their vampire. Know that I will not so we're looking pretty good. Quest. We just straight up draw a card. So we basically can do what they do for free, as long as we have more life than our starting life. The Cosmos Elixir is going to prove to be very useful. Ugin comes down to play. I am ancient. Are they going to kill the Brineborn? They are. Okay, so that's going to be annoying to... We want to get rid of this as soon as we can. we got our own Ugin, but let's go for the Imrith first. And I think the Search as well. Nice. So yeah, keeps this cosmos is keeping us in the game. They do have a lot more cards than us. Truth lies beyond Treasure map. Vision. So that was free because their artifacts cost two less. Well, their colorless spells cost two less. They're very adamant to not play Davriel, but it makes sense because they know we can just take him out. But here he comes anyway. Well, clearly Spectral Adversary is pretty cool because it's a nice way to maybe protect Imrith. We can phase him out. Whenever an opponent attacks you and all planeswalker, they discard a card if they can't sack an attack. So we have to discard in order to attack. Okay. Seems legit. Attacks you and or a planeswalker. So let's go for Ugin, and I think we're just going to straight up kill the Davriel here. Presence alone will guide you towards victory. So it's basically wasted their turn. I value my solitude anyway. And then happy to kill the Ugin as well. So yeah, we'll discard the Essence Flux. And then we've got the Spectral Adversary to block this when it comes in at Ugin. So in one turn we took out two Planeswalkers, which is just amazing. And we just refill our hand again, which is amazing. Oh, a finale of Revelation. This can just straight up win us the game. 
because it just draws us so many cards and uh, there's a rule I have in Commando when somebody draws like seven cards that person normally wins the game because in a multiplayer game four in four player let's say if somebody draws seven that's literally like time walking because if, if somebody draws one a turn it's crazy you're drawing more than three opponents worth obviously in one on one this is drawing seven turns worth of their turns so let's phase this out so even if they kill the adversary they still deal zero damage here Do they have a board wipe? They do. Let's draw creatures. Okay. I felt like that was coming, to be honest. And they get an Ugin back. Yeah, it's pretty brutal. Pretty brutal. So let's make our own blocker. Five, six, seven, eight. How much do we have? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So if we wait one more turn. Then we can maybe draw 10 and untap 5 lands. So let's just equip this to the 2-2. Two -two. So if we block one of these, it will survive the combat. Okay, so if they keep taking damage from the Eye of Vecna, they're going to lose quite a fair amount of their life. They're doing pretty well. The Blood and the Snow definitely changed the face of the game. It was most definitely in our favour, but this is literally inverted the power levels here so they could just spend their whole turn killing Imrith but okay they chose to go for the extra body makes sense someone's car I'm just gonna off outside so I do apologize if you can hear that every time I record there's something going on outside please no more blood in the snow <laughs> I don't know if there's a way to get this back in black I don't think so Black is the master of getting back creatures, planeswalkers, but spells, that's more blues deal. Finale of Eternity. So, they only targeted... Okay, fine. Yeah, that does, that does deal with the Ugin, so... Yeah, I guess that makes sense. This Ugin is proving to be kind of annoying. Black Market Connections, wowzers. So we missed a land drop. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, let's give Imrith six power, and then I think it's time to try and finish Ugin off here. Because he is just giving them so much value. This experience still and we give the Fairy Vandal. Although it has flash, I want to draw more cards. So four, five, six, seven. We'll draw four cards with Gadwick. That'll put an extra counter on the Vandal. And we have some land drops. So I don't think playing Terramander is the move. Because if they have a board wipe, then it just means that we lose four creatures rather than three. Spell Pierce could be nice here to tap something with Gadwick if needs be. So which modes they choose? They always lose at least one life. So this is a very risky card. Oh man, I, I just really want that guy's car alarm to just shut up. Oh, uh, why? Why must that car alarm go off? So it goes off, it stops. Which would assume the user has come out and turned it off. But no, it keeps going off and on, off and on. Murderous Rider... I guess spell piss is fine because it uses up more mana. We'll tap this so if they want to do it they have to do it now. So they do that. Okay, that's fine. We still have pretty good threats on board. 11 mana to cast Imrith. They're slowly dying to their black market connections. In our turn, we're going to be able to draw so many cards and then not have a uh, hand size, so they're going to struggle to deal with us here. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. Fantastic. Oh, and another way. So let's just do this here. This is a pretty huge. We can actually get more, can't we? 
So it will be able to leave one up for Terramanda. So yeah, that's fine actually. Let's just do this. Pay ten. Actually, we'll have more mana up because we can untap, can't we? Let's tap this. Tapping a permanent is pretty insane with Gadwick here. Yep, pretty insane here. One, two, three, four, five. Not sure how they're going to stop us, to be honest. Warming Wave returns all creatures, so we can redeploy the Gadwick. That might be good, actually. And we have infinite hand size, so... Let's just attack with the Flyer. Down to six. Warming Wave. Yeah. Finishes them off. That that would have been crazy. We could have just redeployed Gadwick following turn, draw more cards. Oh, I think that was an impossible scenario, to be honest. We get first against Ishin, and some decent cards from the keep. There'll be a double attack trigger deck. Pretty simple, but pretty fun. They'll be able to get a lot of value. If they ever add a card like Sun Titan into the format, he will be bonkers in this deck. Because whenever Sun Titan enters or attacks, you can return a 3 CMC or less creature to the battlefield from the grave. And obviously if Ishin dies, you can return him and so on and so forth. Let's get a little bit of defense here. We'll get a clone of one of the creatures. Hellrider. Okay, no synergy with our deck, but... Can deal some damage. Selfless Saviour. We definitely don't want to pack or we'll just straight up die. Cool, so now I think we just play defensive. We'll just hold up our Thassa's intervention. And if they cast Ishin, then we'll be able to stop them. And the slower Ishin is, the better it is for us, for us because the whole deck probably relies on Ishin being out, otherwise they get single triggers for all their attacks. We can block their Selfless Saviour all day with a 1-2, so that's fine. They currently can't even cast him. Croxa, so that's going to discard something. And to be honest... Oh, I see, so they're going to hold control and sack it and get two black mana. Very clever. That's actually a really sneaky move, yeah. Cast Croxa in response to the trigger... Sack it to get two black. So, yeah, it's fine to discard. I'll get rid of the Hell Rider. There's literally no synergy with our deck here. And they've got two black mana left. A Thought Seize or a Duress would be really bad here. Uh, Lightfoot Rogue. Gains Death Touch. Yeah, I think I'm fine with that resolving. We can just block that and that'll, these will trade. I've seen more devastating plays. <laughs> cool. Yep, and because of the nature of our deck, it's literally land go most of the time. <laughs> we do have Leyline of Anticipation in the deck, so if you do happen to get that on turn zero as a play, to give all your cards flash, it just makes it easy mode, essentially. If the opponent passes without doing anything, I'm just going to draw two cards within the intervention, which is still fine. Basically adding a card to our hand. Opponent taking a sweet time here. So they are filling up the graveyard, which is always scary. Not even bothered about that, to be honest. It's not got haste. And yeah, I think I will block... Unless they get first strike death touch, 11. So it's just straight up death touch. I'm happy to block here. And if they want to sack the dog, then so be it. Okay, it's fine with me. And yeah, let's just draw two with the intervention here. Look at the top X. Put X into your hand. Or put up to two of them into your hand. Painful Bond. Okay. Not sure why they had to do that at instant speed. So we have five mana. Might as well go for Imrith. 
they literally can't target Imrith unless... So they could sack something here and then maybe get two mana extra. They'd have five mana, but then they'd need something like a, part, um, a source of plowshares. So it would have to be a one mana spell at this point. So it'd be five mana in total. But do they have it? If I had that, I would definitely do that play, just to get rid of Imrith. Fairy Vandal could be nice whenever we draw a second card, put a counter on it, so this could be a potentially a good blocker. Attacking with both of them sounds like they could have a board wipe, I'm thinking. So I'm not going to block, because if they have something good to touch, then we would have lost Imrith. And it's just not worth it for two damage, to be honest. One mana. D Spark. So. How are they paying the ward? What? So clearly, the, <laughs> clearly they don't know how ward four works. It's a little bit embarrassing, to be honest. Um, not sure what to say about that game, but. Probably should have read the card. I mean, even even if they had the extra mana here, that's one, two, three. Yeah, odd move. Anyway, we learn from our mistakes, hopefully. Moving on. We get first against Tatiova. Very good, very, very good starting hand here. The cutthroat into counter spell into mission briefing is just lovely. And we don't have to do any of that in our turn. That's part of the philosophy of building the stack, is doing stuff in the opponent's turn. I mean, the, sadly, I'm going to have to count on that. That's just way too good in that deck. The landfall deck with Cobra? Way too good. So, once again, we'll surprise them with the Cutthroat. So that gets them a land. Jeez, that's... That would have been crazy. So it would have been, play a land, get a land. Play this creature, get a land, so that would have been two extra mana. Not happy about that at all. Ley line's good. So let's just let's just get that out of the way. Because then we can start making the Brydenborn cutthroat huge in their turn. <laughs> Hopefully they can't kill it. I'm not gonna pact because we'll just die. So it's past the turn, we miss a land drop, which is terribly sad. They're going to draw two cards just for playing this. Oh my goodness. The crazy thing is, decks now can have so many more fetch lands, because Luca Penna added five of these. If you add that to Evolving Wilds as well, as well as Fabled Passage, it's pretty bonkers. Let's just count on this because we can. So we, we need a land. And I don't want them to draw two extra cards here. Elvish Rejuvenator. Okay. This is starting to worry me now. Three, four, five, six, seven. So they can now attack and block with a stomper. As if they just drew two more. I think we just lost the game already. Uncommon commander, my ass. This is the most mythic command I've ever seen. Okay, pass to them. So they could technically just win here. Three, four, five, six, seven. If they create a poof, we're just screwed. We can counter it though. Zimone, that's the least of our worries. Scale the heights. Okay, I mean the whole deck just ramps. Jeez, every, everything they do is just replaced. Okay, that's a 5-5 with Vigilance. It's going to be tough to beat that. Our Boreal Craze are damn. They've got a way to block the Imrith now. This is the kind of deck you need to have Narset to face. 
just way too good. This could get countered. Okay, no blocks. Turn to 16. Uh, I do want to... I do want to attack. Anything with reach. There's only the grazer, so they'll probably block here. They don't block. What? They've got a crater hoof, haven't they? They have a crater hoof. I know they do, because that's the only reason you wouldn't actually block with this. <laughs> Oracle. Uh, yeah, that's... That's got to get countered. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, they're one mana away from... Crater Hoof. I just feel it in my bones. I feel it in my bones, Annie. My storms are coming. Seiju. Okay. Tell me below what film I just quoted. I feel it in my bones, Annie. My storms are coming. I probably did, that did not sound like the original voice. If you get that, I'll be very impressed. <laughs> it's an old, an old film. That's for sure. Do you feel it in your bones? Do you feel it in your fingers? Do you feel it in your toes? I feel it everywhere. I just The only reason you wouldn't block is because you want an extra attacker. Let's see if we can surprise him with this. Land's okay. At least we can block now. Boom, boom, boom. Ooh. This could be crazy at 7 mana. Or X equals 5. We don't have it right now, but... Swing in. 5, 6. So we do have a way to stop the crater hoover. We've actually got two ways. If, if we win this, I'll be very surprised. Yeah, I don't want to do this yet, because if we wait for 5 mana, we get to put one of the permanents into play. No one made a video about this, saying it's one of the top cards from... Baldur's Gate. He's right. It's crazy. This is crazy. Flipping it. See, with a deck like this, Crater Hoof is kind of the only thing they can kind of win with, right? What's the other solution? I suppose the alternative would be extra turns. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten mana. That's a lot to do a lot of stuff. They make a big thing here. Fourteen, fourteen. Fourteen. So we could just make a copy of Brineborn. I think I'd rather just go for the Gale. So Gale gives us a spell back from our graveyard. Which is good. So, yeah, the stroke is nice. Everyone likes it. <laughs> Everyone like no. <laughs> Everyone likes a nice stroke, don't they? Um. So, we'll chomp here. Doesn't have trample. Okay. So now this island is going to be. It's going to be an issue. Let's face it. Looking at Imrith. What you gonna do, boy? Put a land into play. So that means the island gets bigger. Oh, it's a scary thing. Even if we bounce all the crap, they're still gonna be able to deploy it. 40 life, man. This is this is where you want commander damage, isn't it? What are they? Last would surge. Okay. So they get more lands. I mean, they've already got enough lands to kill us. So there's no point countering this. 
They get so much stuff to their hands. They're even discarding now. <laughs> Another blocker. Okay, we, we didn't get the land for the simulacra yet, but we could get one here. Come on, give us the land. A okay. Pass the turn. We've got we've got a lot of interaction, especially with the ley line of anticipation. So let's see, let's see what we got. If we get a copy of this, that'd be pretty cool, because the simulacra becomes so it could get a duplicate of each of X target non token permanents. Nyx Bloom Ancient. That's going to give them a lot of stuff. Okay. Go go wild. <clears throat> so they've got quadruple mana now. Oh, three times mana. That's alright then. Just three times. Okay. So this is, there's two 1919s. There's just attacking with one. So seven, pay five. Let's go for one, two, three, four, and whilst we want, I guess, I guess a land is fine. So we can put one of them into play if this resolves. They they must have counters for this. They must have counters. <laughs> Spectacular finish though. If I, if I die here, yeah, it's pretty crazy, crazy game. We've got two ninety ninety. Basically, these two are the same card. It's got reach. I will pack this though if they respond. They could have anything, couldn't they? If this was instant speed card, it'd be mental. The fact we can play this instant speed makes it absurd. If we if we had a way to copy the snowborn simulacra as well. March of swelling mists. Let's pack it. I don't want to phase it. I don't want them to phase things. If they counter the pact, then we'd have to pay five. Wowzers. Wowzers! <laughs> we get an XP. They quit because of this card. <laughs> what the hell? They had all these things in their hand. And they would have swung in with a 19. We would have blocked that. We would have had an XP Ancient. What? How do we win this? God knows. We go first against Sark and Wanderer to Shiv. Not a bad starting hand. It's pretty defensive. Sarkin likes dragons. Makes all the dragons in the hand perpetually cheaper. So it's a pretty scary one. Because it means their curve is kind of lowered quite a bit. Although well, saying that, this is the haste creature, so I'm starting to wonder what kind of deck this really is. It could just be a deck that's looking to gain some Shiv and Dragons for the plus one, which is kind of ludicrous. Because late game, if both parties are struggling, uh, the player that gets a Shiv and Dragon every turn is pretty insane. I know it's a 6 mana 4-4 four, four with fire breathing, but man. License Hearse, let's just counter this. We need to optimise our curve. Let's go for the conundrum, which is utterly useless, but I just want to draw an extra card. If they do get a solemn simulacrum, eventually this might hinder them, but it's pretty unlikely. If they do play a solemn, they deserve to bounce the line back to the hand. Okay, so yeah, let's just pass a turn. We can even counter two spells next turn if they choose to go for... Oh no, actually maybe not. We can counter one.
I'm a little bit speechless. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to counter this. <laughs> what are the odds that they actually got a Solemn? That's so weird. So now we can go for the Cosmos Elixir to gain life and scry, and we can even counter their commander still if we want to. So now the Cosmos Elixir, to Elixir stops two attacks on the ramp battery each turn, which is pretty awesome. Here comes a Magna. And they're going to reconfigure it onto here, which means they attack, they'll get a treasure. So now they're doing one more damage than the Elixir can save. So, yeah. It's pretty annoying. But now we have the Imrith plus the Flicker. So if they do choose to hurt Imrith in any way, shape or form, we can Flicker him and protect him. Let's see if they fall for the Ward 4 trap, which I've seen quite a few people do. Blue Sun Zenith, absolutely wonderful. Draws us a lot of cards. Keep that on top. If we can resolve this, we'll be very good. Four, five, six. If they go for Sarkin, they understand the risk that it could just straight up die to our flyer. So it's unlikely that we'll see Sarkin come out to play. But they could have a handful of other terrifying beings. Most of which could just be dragons. So they're choosing to attack which would suggest they have a way to deal damage in the hand. So we're going to kill the Magda. Ember Cleave. Okay. So this is going to be a trade. Okay. I could just save the Imrith here. Which I think I will. Yeah, that's fine with me, because next turn we can get a copy of Imrith and then swing in with the OG Imrith. And yeah, we do take four. Actually, we take eight because of the trample. Eh, that's fine. We can take a couple more hits. Let's get a copy. So I'd rather block with the copy. Because I don't really want to spend seven to get back my original commander, but... Ethereal Grasp. Oh, this would be good if we could use it. Ugin, also a nice hit on top. Ah, oh, it's a shame we didn't have one more mana open. We could have just tapped Magda. Skargon Halkite. So it's got the counter. So actually, maybe that would be a good target for the Grasp. We shall see. Yeah, I'm definitely happy to trade here. So the four damage will hit Imrith, and then we'll just beat each other up. We will take three damage over the top. But they do lose something with two things attached to it. And then in the following turn, if the Ember Cleave on here, we can just tap it with the Grasp. And this is a fantastic chance to literally just count their commander. Five, six, seven, eight. So if they do choose to... I could just go for Ugin, right? Yeah, Ugin killed the Skargon Hellcat, I think. Every and then we'll con we can save the grass for something else. And yeah, we'll leave him with back to block. Run away together. I'd rather get a land so we can draw more cards with the Blue Sun Zenith. Man, it's crazy how powerful Mono Red can be. This is obviously like the pinnacle. Ember Cleave on Flyers, on Haste, on Dragons. But whenever I seem to use a Mono Red deck, I never seem to do this well. But we'll see. River Tears Requisitioner. So they're going to attack Ugin with both. I wonder. So this is going to die at end of turn anyway. There's nothing we can do to save Ugin. Because this has got Trample. Yeah, fine. We lose Ugin. Acceptable loss, I think. So the requisition. This is a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? The Rev River Tears requisitioner. It dies. They draw a card. Meh. Whatever. They basically, they basically just lightning bolted. Uh, yeah, let's attack here. I want to draw a land, please. 
Just something good. Opt. Um, yeah, let's get a land. If pos, if pos, drawn from dreams. I mean, that's still good. Let's get two lands in that case. Oh, that's even better. Mystic Sanctuary. So, what can we get back? Get back anything, can't we? Drawn from Dreams, why not? Put that on top of the deck. Just keep drawing stuff. So, we could have... Yeah, it's fine. We didn't, we didn't draw it anyway, so it was luckily we didn't... Uh, see, if we had drawn that, that would have been a misplay, because then we could have put Counter Spell into our hand, but... So now we have to contend with Shivan Dragons every single turn, and they will probably have Ember Cleave. However, we do have the Ethereal Grasp, so this will be able to tap it down. Dragon Fire. Wow. Okay. This is going to be irritating, I have to admit. So now we're looking for a way to bounce all their permanents, aren't we, to be honest. Let's go for the Imrith again. Land is fine, because remember, we want to just get enough land so we to draw so many cards to stop them. Um, River's Rebuke is probably one of the best things we can draw, because they can hopefully only deploy one Shim Dragon a turn. Here it comes. They can give it haste, but one, two, three. They don't have enough to give it the Ember Cleave as well. So this is going to be easy to tap down. Man, this, this is going to be so hard dealing with so many Shivan Dragons here. I'm actually, I think I'm probably going to ignore the, the Sarkin and just go straight for the face. The fact it gets haste is... Oh, scary. Scary. Okay, let's swing at them. Down to ten. Fairy Vandal. This doesn't have trample yet. So yeah, let's go for the drawn from dreams. We are desperate here. The borrow was good. Sailor's good as well. These are both blockers and it doesn't have trample. So we might be able to just get really lucky with just chump blocking. And then eventually the Fairy Vandal could get big enough to start defending properly. <clears throat> so we have to be careful with sequencing. Come to me, great because so that Shaman Dragon doesn't have haste. So when they equip that onto it, we'll see what they put the double strike on actually. Okay, so we can always respond to... So they're not going to give Ember Cleave. Fine. So we tap it down, it costs 8 to untap. And then now we can just bounce the dragon. I mean now what they're going to do, you know? Four mana open. So this is post combat now, so they can't attack without Reckless Storm Seeker. Let's swing into the face. So that means essentially we're threatening lethal in the air. They're on five. Terra Manus, we've got another fly here. Let's go for this. So this costs one to make it a 5-5, five five, which is pretty epic. Flash, flash, six, seven, three, four, five, six, three, four, five, six. So go for the clone crafter. So obviously the ember cleave is the issue here. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm going to pass a turn. We gain a bit of life. 
Fingers crossed. <laughs> so, yeah, the Ember Cleave is definitely the issue. But I think we might be okay. They're choosing to just straight up kill this thing. In dragon fire. That's kind of curious, isn't it? They didn't want to make that cheaper. Okay. So that could be 6, 7, 14. So I need to give it haste. Okay. So they don't know we have the flashes, do we? So anything we can basically... Yeah, so if they attack now, it means that they lose the game. That's 16. Two toughness, one toughness. Yeah, I think we're okay. So this is 18, so we have to block this with everything. 18 minus 3, 15. So I think we just chump it with everything. And I think we're fine. 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah, I think we basically just only just survive that. Down to 14, then 9, 10, 11. Yeah, and then we win on the swing back with Imrith. So that's all because of our uh, flash blockers. Sometimes it's not even about having to <laughs> kill them fast. It's just about being able to survive slowly. Crazy. That was pretty scary. Damn it. Don't forget to check out more of my videos. And also my Kofi donations page. You can donate as little or as much as you want.